Okay, so my topic, I think, what is my topic? To tell them how to make more money? Okay, invest. There's a gender investing gap. You need to all invest. Thank you. Thank you. Let me, let me tell you what I really want to talk about. What I really want to talk about are a couple of things I'm sick of and a couple of things I am really, really optimistic about. The two things I'm sick of, the word empowerment. You know, I haven't, whenever it's been used in anything I've, I've been involved in, I always scratch it out. And I thought the reason I scratched it out was because it was overused. And then I actually looked it up in the dictionary. And I read the definition. And the definition of empowerment is to give power to somebody. And I thought, this is very 1998 in terms of women in business. We don't need to be given power. We have power. And let me talk in a minute about why I'm optimistic that, the, that things are going our way. The second thing I'm sort of sick of is all the advice for women today, and there's so much of it, much of it is a good, but there's some good part of it that really focuses on telling us all how to act like middle-aged white guys. <laughs> how to negotiate like a man, how to ask for that raise like a man, how to take a seat at the table like a man, like a man. The power of diversity is diversity of difference. And so telling us to act like other folks is a sure way to negate the power of diversity. So those are the two things that I'm sort of agitating over a little bit. Let me tell you what I am unbelievably excited about. I think the pace of change for us women in business is about to pick up. I think we are reaching an inflection point. And I'll give you four reasons. Reason number one, is I can tell you as a recovering research analyst, there is so much research today on the power of gender diversity. The gender diversity at the top levels of management, top levels of boards, leads to higher returns on equity, lower risk, greater client focus, greater employee engagement, lower volatility, greater long-term focus, greater innovation, that the power of gender diversity is so great that diverse teams outperform smarter and more capable teams. Now you said, I've heard this before. But the truth is, it was one thing when it was catalyst. I mean, after all, that's a that girls' organization, right? They did the research. But all of a sudden, you've got it coming from the IMF, the World Economic Forum, Center for Talent Innovation, Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse, Morgan Stanley. And I'm beginning to sense in my travels that at some point in the very near future, this research becomes almost overwhelming. That the companies that have all men at the top, that have boards that are mostly men, are going to begin to look like they're missing a significant performance driver as this conversation continues. They're going to begin to look, dare I say it, perhaps a little emotional in their decision to keep men only at the top, perhaps a little irrational in their decision. And the other reason I'm optimistic is because as much difference as we women make today in business, we bring so many great qualities that are going to be more valuable going forward. The business world's changing. That act like a man assumes business is static. But business is changing. Technology is laying waste to entire ways of doing business. So we have more data. We have more information. We have more transparency. Starting business is easier. And to that, these qualities that we women bring, and I've done quite a bit of research on this, are things like holistic perspective, being able to see the complexity, risk awareness, 
relationship orientation, a drive for meaning and purpose, things that are of real value today. And as the puck moves from, I've got all the information and nobody else does, so I can run the company in a command and control way, to everybody has it, the ability to see through that complexity, to see things holistically, is going to become more and more valuable. So I think women are valuable today. The research is compelling today, and that will only increase. By the way, I like guys. I want to be clear. I love me a middle-aged white guy. I have been married to two of them. Just want to get that out there. I should have started with that. So I do want to be clear, while this may sound like it's all about women, this is not about excluding the guys. This is about including the women. Point number two that makes me optimistic, the cost of starting businesses is plummeting. And so back in the day when I was having some issues with good old Vikram Pandit, the CEO of Citigroup, and he and I were having a back and forth that ended up with my being fired, I really had two choices, three choices. I could stay where I was, sit down and shut up. I could go to another company, sort of like Citi, with not much information, or I could go home. Today, those choices go, stay, remain, but with greater transparency, because now I can look at, at um, organizations like Fairy God Boss and so on, and see what the cultures are and the policies are of other companies I would go work at. More importantly, I can start my own thing. I now run Elevest, a digital investment platform for women, E-L-L-E-V-E-S-T, in case you're wondering, very focused on the investing needs of women. Wall Street has served women not nearly as well as they've served men. We've gone out and built something that takes into account women's, oh, you know, longer lives, lives. the fact our salaries peak sooner in order to put together financial and investing plans to help women. This is something we couldn't have done 10 years ago, five years ago, even two years ago. The cost of starting businesses is coming down so much. It used to be, I'd want to build a widget factory, widget business, so I need a widget factory, I need a widget workforce, I need widget machines, I need a widget distribution plan, I need to advertise my widgets on one of the three networks, it was expensive. Today, I don't have to have servers. I can be in the cloud. Today, there are lots of third-party companies that will help us with the technology. Today, I don't need a long-term lease. I can rent at WeWorks. Today, I don't have to go on a business trip. I can video chat. Today, I don't have to hire an entire HR department. I can go with Zenefits. Today, today, today. I ran Merrill Lynch, the cost of the platform, which invested for clients, was $1.4 billion. Bells and whistles could do everything. Elevest does essentially the same thing, fewer bells and whistles, much more third party. It cost $3 million to put together. The opportunity for us to start our own businesses, that are the businesses at which we want to work, is greater than it's ever been. That's number two. Number three. Back in the day when I was a youngster, and I'm 24 now, so back when I was 22, <laughs> the truth is, it was a zero-sum game for us women. We knew this. We knew that if I was at the head table with the nine guys, maybe one other woman would be there, but I knew it wasn't going to be two. And so I knew deep down in that evil black part of my heart that I don't go to very often, that if someone else was succeeding who was a woman, maybe that was at my expense. I was queen bead. I had a woman who told me, I'm going to help you, Sally. Count on me. Depend on me. And she was sitting across the table from me when I was reorged out. And so there was a zero-sum game. That's changing. It's changing, one, because of this research that more women are good at a company. So that is changing. But it's also changing because you're being successful if you start a company, your raising funds only helps me. Because then people who see you as successful invest in you. All these investors do this pattern recognition. And so venture capitalists today typically pattern recognize a 24-year-old Stanford male graduate in a hoodie. To the extent they're seeing other women get funding, that's a good thing. 
Last week, I announced that Elevest is being funded. We did a round, not only led by Coastal Ventures, a traditional venture capitalist in Silicon Valley, but investors include Venus Williams, Ariel Investments President Melody Hobson, Teresa Gao, Jennifer Fonstadt, Sonia Perkins, for those of you who don't know them, a great venture capitalist out in Silicon Valley on the East Coast, Karen Feinerman, who's on Fast Money, and Andrea Young, we're in the first, who was the president of, um, of Avon. We're in our first round. All of a sudden, women helping women, women being successful is great for women. And I love this concept because these women are taking their money, investing in an investment platform to help other women invest. Money is power. Point number four, money is power. We women today control $5 trillion of investable assets. We jointly control with our spouses and partners $6 trillion of investable assets. We are on target to inherit 70% of the $40 trillion of wealth transfer that will occur over the next few decades. We control 80 to 85% of consumer spending in this country, and we are more than half the workforce. Can somebody remind me now why they're telling us we have to play the man's game? Because with this kind of power, as we recognize it, not be empowered, but recognize our power, we are able to increasingly, with this greater transparency, work, half of us, the half of the workforce, work at companies that align with our values and treat us well. Not the flexibility program that nobody takes, but true flexibility without shame. If those companies don't work for us, we can go someplace else with transparency. We can buy from companies, we can, we can download buy up, we can go to the grocery store and we can see the gender composition of the senior leadership team and boards of the companies we buy from. We can invest in companies with gender diverse leaderships. I have uh, a partial owner of Pax Elevate Global Women's Index Fund. It is the longest name we could think of for it which invest in companies based on not what they're doing or trying to do, but based on the percent of women on their boards and the percent of women in their senior leadership team. $5 trillion, 80% of consumer spending, more than half the workforce, greater transparency, the ability to start our own businesses like we never could, the ability to freelance as a non-traditional career in a way we never could, Things are changing. It's not even that we have to skate to the puck. The puck is coming to us. We have got tremendous power. What's going to happen to the companies who get this right? Well, it's going to be a virtuous circle. They're going to have those higher ROEs, lower risks, greater long-term focus, all that good stuff I talked about before. We're going to, if we step into this power, increasingly buy from them, increasingly work for them, and increasingly invest in them. The companies that don't, that continue with this gender pay gap will lose. You think this isn't true? Today, you can start to see how you're being paid versus your male peers and for your job. You can go to getraise.com and calculate your personal gender pay gap. You can go to comparably.com, do the same thing. And if you're tired of your job, you can go to hired.com and literally people will bid on you. Literally, the transparency that's occurring here because of technology is going to wipe out that gap. And the companies that don't get it will lose. You think again, well, yeah, that's on the way. Do you know that millennial women today are more likely to leave their jobs than millennial men? Is it because they want flexibility? Nope. Is it because they want to have families? Nope. They're leaving to make more money. They are more likely to leave to make more money than the millennial men are. Before I step down, let me just reiterate, I'm excited about this because I happen to be a woman. I happen to have my own business. I happen to be seeing some of these important trends. I'm excited about this for my daughter. I'm excited about this for my niece. You know who else I'm excited about this for? 
my husband and my son. Because these things that I'm talking about, again, do not exclude men. They include women. You know what they do? They close the retirement savings gap, which is a woman's issue because we live six to eight years longer than men. And if we can close the gender pay gap, we close the retirement savings gap by one third. We grow the economy that when there's more money in our pockets, yeah, a little less for shareholders, but wages have been stagnant for too long. And this money will go in and be spent and grow the economy. It will send capital into the markets, which will help businesses grow. So when you tend to think about these issues like that retirement savings crisis, most of the solutions are negative. Most of them are tax increases, entitlement cuts, ugh, yuck, vomit. These are all about growth. So I believe with the changes that are being driven by technology, we are on the cusp of a time that's going to be a golden age for us as professional women. Thank you.